Thank you, Steve. We're so honored to have you playing with us and Always just a making that organ Always rock. Always a pleasure. That's Steve Rock and Roll Vander back there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. Good morning. It's a little bit um. Uh, On the balmy side. Yeah, yeah. A little, yeah. It's, it's killing my hair. It's it's hard for me. It's really this is difficult. My name is Pastor Mike, and this is my good friend and partner in ministry, Pastor Liz. We are thankful that you're here with us this morning. Today is an exciting day in the life of the church because today we're going to get to see our VBS, our Camp Coaster Kids. Uh, kind of do a little bit of song and dance at the end of the service. So we're super excited that they're going to be here with it's us gonna this morning. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. We had a great, great week. Yeah, they had a fantastic, so. and there were magicians and snakes and, and what, spiders. Spi and, spiders, yes. Yeah, 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 all those things. Yeah, it's all about Jesus here. That's apparently, <laughs> that's kind of how it works. God's creation. Yeah, God God's created creation. That's all right. those beautiful things. That's right. So if today is one of your first days here at Oceanside First Press, I want to say thank you for coming. We are so glad you're here. You're going to look around and you're going to see a lot of people that are going to love you, but I want you to know something, that none of the people in this room, not even on this chancel stage, none of us are perfect. None of us have got it figured out. None of us are, are where we need to be yet, and God's at work in us. And so we're, we're so thankful that you decided to come and worship with us this morning. Our service is about an hour long. It's got a healthy blend of traditional music as well as contemporary music. Uh, you can feel free to stand and raise your hands if you want to. You can feel... Feel free to sit and just meditate and hear the music. Respond how God leads you is kind of where we are. And um, today's just a great day because God is doing some really cool great stuff. Day. As our church has just reopened just a few months ago, we really do feel like a brand new church plant. Everything is brand new. Everything new is new going forward. And we're so excited about what God is doing here. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Liz, is there something that I'm forgetting to tell people about? Oh, there's a number of things. That, that typical. sounded super snotty. Very typical. Super snotty. Sorry. That was my outside voice. Um, we have, on the 21st, we are going to go to the Padres game, and I heard that there are still three tickets left. Yeah, we got So three, if you have been left. anticipating going to the Padres game and you keep forgetting to buy tickets, because that would be me, um, go on the church's website, oceansidepress.org. Sign up there, and we will get you those tickets. It should be a great night to hang out, maybe eat a hot dog and some popcorn, and just enjoy some time together, some fellowship together, and enjoy the Padres. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And they're yeah. playing pretty well for the Padres. I mean, we don't want to bring up another... Div <laughs> wow, I didn't have to do it. I didn't have to say something that was going to make you all go get upset. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. The other thing that's coming up right now... My it, giants are playing really well. The, um, the other thing that's coming up is we're doing a survey of the, of the New Testament, a 12-week 12, 12 class called Disciple Fast Track of the New Testament. So we're going to go all the way from uh, Matthew all the way to Revelation, and we're going to talk through the entire story. And we'd love to have you. If you want to find out more about that, you simply point your web browser to oceansidepress.org. Yes. Also, I heard that next week um, there is going to be a meeting... For those who might be interested in visiting the Holy Land in October of 2022, is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Um, one of the things that we have here at Oceanside is a travel study program. It's kind of a travel vacation program, but we have to call it study. So it's still, so it, you know, covers, check some, check some things off. Uh, but we're planning on taking as many of you all that want to go, uh, Amy and I, to uh, the Holy Lands next October. And if you want to find out a little bit about that trip and what you'll experience, what you'll see, the places that you'll stay... Uh, the sights and the sounds. And you're just, if you're just interested, come on by next Sunday in the fire si in the I'm sorry, in the um, Fe fellowship hall in the fellowship hall after church. And then after church today, we want to invite you to come to fellowship. Maybe watch the kids as they come to go down the slide. Just have a great time of fellowship together. We also want you to continue the conversation, which you'll find those questions in your um, in your bulletin this morning. It's a great way to continue to deepen your faith with others as we continue to reflect upon our sermon this morning. Absolutely. If everybody would do me the honor right now of taking out that connection card, that's that little card on the, in the middle of your bulletin, we're, we're going to do something a little different. So to, if today is your first day with us or one of your first times with us, we definitely want you to fill out that and just put a little information on there. Notice that there's a section for a prayer request. Whatever that's going on in your life, we want you to share that prayer request. And at the end of the service, place it in one of the baskets that's around the room so that we can find out what's going on. The second thing I want you to do in that big box is, again, as we're restarting, we know that there's a whole section of our community that's not yet ready or not yet able to, 
to be with us, to be with us live in person. Some of them are online with us right now, and some of, us haven't, some of them haven't even figured out how to get online. And so if there's a person that's MIA, missing in action, here in our congregation, in our church family, and you know it because you used to sit next to them every Sunday, and they're not here right now, would you do us the honor of writing their name down so we can go through the process and find out what's going on and see if we can connect with them? That would be incredibly helpful. That would be really great. I think it's time to worship. Yeah, let's, let's open our time together in prayer. Would you all pray with me? Great and powerful God, God of grace and mercy, God of truth and love, we ask right now that everything that we say this morning, everything we do is directed towards you, that, that the thoughts, our thoughts, our meditations, our songs all lift you up and glorify you. We pray this in your son's holy name. And everyone here said? Amen. Amen. And let's stand as we sing, I Surrender All. You'll find all your, the lyrics to the music in your bulletin this morning. to 
If you join me for the call to worship, please stand. <laughs> Doing a little exercise this morning. Good for us. <clears throat> Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Surely salvation is at hand for those who fear the Lord. Please be seated. You'll get back up in a second. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, I want to introduce you to Brandon Denoto. Everybody say hi, Brandon. Hi. Well, you don't know why you're clapping yet, but you will in a second. Um, after a long search of many talented and gifted candidates, our search committee has not settled on, but found who we believe is our best best person to lead us going forward, our choral ministry going forward, and that is Brandon Denota. <laughs> so Brandon, I think it's appropriate because people are going to want to get to know you, and so they're going to talk to you all a ton yeah. after the service. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, your school history. Sure. So I was born in this little um, town. I mean, it's not too far from here, called um, Oceanside. Oh. <laughs> uh, Flip-flopped back and forth from Hawaii, back and forth until God brought us back here. Ah, uh, uh, suffering in Hawaii. You know, <laughs> I like to think of it as doing the Lord's work wherever okay. he calls us. Okay, that works. <laughs> I went to school at Point Loma, not too far from the parents. Uh, then I went to my uh, master's degree up at USC, and my dad, who's sitting right there filming for my mother, uh, did not have to put me on the rowing team to get me in, so. <laughs> Fantastic. I see some fight-ons in the audience, very good. And I have just love God, I love people, I love music, and I think that uh, choir directing is the best way to combine all of those things and to serve him. So I cannot wait just to be leading the choir here and to get to know every one of you, whether you're singing in the choir or not. Let's fill those back pews back there. Come and see me after a service if you want to sing in the choir. Absolutely. I'd love to chat with you both about and not about music. Excellent. Thank you, Brandon. Let's do, let's do something fun. We're going to pray for Brandon as he starts his ministry with us. Do me a favor. If you can, just reach your hand out. We're going to pray for him. Dear God, we ask the Lord right, that you would be lifted. Your, your spirit would be moving and continuing to move in Brandon. We ask that you bless his ministry here at Oceanside First Press. We ask that the music that he makes uh, brings joy to you. We pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, good morning. I know you can't see me. I'm back here. Back here. How's everybody doing today? Good. You know, the, the thing about when we come together as a church, some of us are on high highs, some of us are on, we're struggling with things. We all come together. You know, I, I think it's in Ecclesiastes where it says, you know, to everything there's a season, and we bring that all together and support each other. And uh, today, you know, uh, just a kind of a side note, I have known Brandon a long time. He was, I don't know how big you were when I first met you, but yeah, smaller, yeah. And uh, so I'm very excited to have Brandon here. So welcome, man, this is gonna be fun. Um, and, you know, today there's a lot of momentous things. You might notice somebody up here that you don't see very often. Um, and look, she looks a little bigger, just a little bigger, <laughs> which is my oldest daughter, Lexi, who is expecting. So we're very excited. She's expecting in September. Excited to have her with us this morning. And then right next to her, you know her, but today is actually her 16th birthday. <laughs> Aria. Yeah! And next to her, you, you know him. No. <laughs> Just keep going down the line. But the great thing is that we can come together, you know, when we can celebrate with each other, we can support each other in those times we need to support each other. And, um, and the thing that really brings us together is Jesus. You know, he is the lion that saves us, and he's the lamb that he is that sacrifice that paid the price for us. So would you stand one more time and let's sing together, The Lion and the Lamb. Broken hearts. 
song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you Jesus the only name we could ever bring Jesus, the only one who could ever say, is worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus. 
That's the only name look above the name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. He's worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Every day, I start my day with prayer. And I do that not because, I don't say that to brag, I say that because I don't know how I would start my day. Because there are days that get frantic and there are days that get exhausting. And when I start my day with prayer, and start my day by centering around my maker, my redeemer, and my savior, I know that the day will be okay. No matter what crazy things may come my way, no matter what crazy things my children do or that silly fight I get in with my husband, I know that God is there because I centered that day around God. And so as we pray this morning, I invite you to invite the Spirit into your life and to invite God into your life, that God may speak to you and speak through you. Would you pray with me? Oh God, most high, you care for the lowly, but look down on the haughty. In your steadfast love, fulfill your purpose for us. Restore us again, O oh God, of our salvation. We pray for the church and all who work to give hospitality to others. Restore us again, O God of our salvation. We pray for peace among nations, religions, ideologies, and people. Restore us again, O God of our salvation. We pray for those who have been injured by war, natural disasters. We pray especially 
for our friends in Turkey and the surrounding areas who are dealing with wildfires. We pray for the wildfires that are currently going on in California. We pray for our firefighters and for all who are struggling to protect their homes and their livelihoods at this time. And we pray for those who are injured by financial collapse and all who cry out for help. Restore us again, O oh God of our salvation. We pray for those who are oppressed because of class, age, gender, ability, or anything else. We pray that we would be the voice for the voiceless, that we would stand for the oppressed, and that we would be your hands and feet of love for all that we come in contact with. Restore us again, O God of our salvation. We pray for those afflicted by illness or disease or who are overcome by the fear of death. We lift up especially to you our frontline workers and those who care for us. We pray for people, for places in our country where ICU beds are becoming scarce. We pray for hope and for restoration. Restore us again, O oh God of our salvation. Gracious God, you are the friend in need, and may we show hospitality to others, whether it is in the form of angels or strangers, for the sake of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. together, melting our hearts as one. By God's Spirit we are united, once in His blessed Son. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined Spirit of God, we are one in the bond of love. Now, dear Lord, we join in worship. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for this love you gave us. Thank you for Something taking up some of the seats in the room. There are a bunch of backpacks in here. So do me the honor of grabbing one of those backpacks if you're nearby. Make sure you're not grabbing someone else's purse because that's inappropriate. <laughs> or if you have a backpack and they're taking your backpack from you, please let them know that backpack belongs to you. Uh, what you're taking part in right now is the end of our backpack drive. Um, every year we collect backpacks for an organization we partner with called Solutions for Change. This organization helps bring people from homeless, bring families from homelessness into basically a functional, normal life, uh, a life that's reintegrated into, into the fabric of our culture. 
in a, in a healthy way. And so you all have been so generous, you've been so incredibly generous, uh, that we wanted to make sure that you knew that you did something big. So there, there's a ton of backpacks around here. So what we want you to do right now is if, if, if everybody could grab a backpack, right? So if, there's, if you don't have one, find one nearby. That, oh, you just got one stolen. That's good. That's perfect. We're, we're going to pray for the kids and the families that are going to receive these gifts. So I want you to put a blessing, pray a blessing on them. So would you do me the honor of praying with me? God, we recognize that everything we do in this space is to bring you glory. It, it is not about uh, the pastor. It's not about the, the musicians. It's not about anything other than focusing our hearts on you. And Father, it's, it's in tremendous gratitude that we recognize how much grace you've shown us, how much love you've shown us, that we're able to give back. And so, Lord, we ask not only that the, the children that would receive these, ba- these backpacks would receive the blessings that we're sending, but that they would also receive the blessing that you're sending. A blessing of hope, a blessing of mercy, a blessing of new life, a blessing of healed and restored relationships. We pray all this in your son's holy name. And everyone here said? Amen. Amen. Now you can just discard those backpacks randomly and wildly. Where, no. Just leave them where they are. Try not to trip over them uh, on the way out. Uh, the other thing I get to tell you is as I, I love this church because it is a generous church. It's a church that goes out of its way to give not just to its own programs, but to, to give to others. And so back uh, Solutions for Change is one of the things that we do. We have a, a monthly food distribution where folks uh, that are dealing with food scarcity drive through the, the church and they pick up a whole bag or box of food. It's amazing. It's incredible. Um, we have all of our ministries are starting to, are restarting right now. As a matter of fact, we have a team that's uh, planning our new student ministry as we're getting ready to start that up. Again, we've, we're a brand new church plant. We're having a good time. It's time to get things uh, rocking and a rolling. So this morning, if you're a guest, if this is like your first time here, I don't want you to feel compelled, guilted, or even shamed that you're like, well, I have to put something in that basket. I want you just to be here. Enjoy, experience worship. If you're one of our family members, one of the folks that's always here, and um, you're in a position where you can continue to give and continue to give generously, there are baskets located I feel like a, a flight attendant over here, over here, and over here. Um, and we would love for you to continue to support the ministries of this church. Let us continue our time in worship. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire And in the darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God Let's stand and sing this And all my life you have been faithful And all my so good with every breath that I am able oh, I will sing of the goodness of God 
Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give my everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give my everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God why well, we'll sing of the goodness of God Amen. standing I want you to go out of your way to say hello to the people around you in the ways that you feel most comfortable right for some folks that's a wave other people that's an elbow tag some folks I say hey 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 get away Whatever feels comfortable, make them feel comfortable. Say hello, make some friends. So someone told me that after the service, over in the patio, aside from coffee and lemonade and stuff like that, there, there might actually even be cake. So again, someone told me that after the service, over in the patio, that as the kids are basically creating havoc and chaos out on the, on the lawn, there'll be cake over here. So um, I, I, I'm not selling it, I'm just inviting you all to it. Uh, one of the things that we get to do and we get to be as this, uh, is a warm congregation that's that's intentional about greeting and making people feel at home. If you're brand new here, this is us. We sing a lot. Uh, we love to worship. It's kind of, it's kind of in our DNA. It's the, heart of our, it's the heart of who we are. We are focused on Christ. Um, and, and so this morning, as we sing this next song, I want to invite you to sing and remain seated as we sing uh, and focus your hearts as, as we prepare. Crimson. 
appreciate your leading as choir is on break for August. We actually give our teams a rest. I am not the cruel taskmaster that everybody paints me to be. The choir gets a chance to rest every now and then. Today I want to provide you with, I think, a really powerful tool that can help anybody and everybody in the context of relationship. Um, whether it's with your family, with your significant other, with a friend, at work, maybe with your neighbor, your crazy neighbor, I just want to give you a tool this morning that's going to help you re-engage and grow something beautiful. Are you ready to re-engage with me? I know that we're, what we're going to talk about is we're starting this brand new series called Re-Engage. Well, I know for some of us it's going to it's going to hit hard. It's going to touch on things that we've experienced in our lives because the story that we're referencing is the story of Hosea. It's an Old Testament story of a prophet that God asked to do something, well, unthinkable. And the pain that comes out in the story is a pain that many of us have felt, many of us have experienced, and I just want to prepare you. So over the next four weeks, we're going to be camping out in chapters 1, 2, and 3 of the book of Hosea, and I encourage you to read it. I encourage you to read as much of it as you can, but just camp out on the story of Hosea and his wife. Trust me when I say that I know the feeling that you all struggle with, feelings of bruised and breaking relationships, tension-filled families where fights don't ever seem to end, where there is workplace drama, there is school drama. There is friend drama. The drama just won't ever seem to end, and you don't seem like you have a clue as to what you're supposed to do in the face of it all. I want you to know that things can and do get better, and I want you to know how to help get them better, how to re-engage relationships that have become broken, that have become filled to the brim, not with hope, but with pain. Friends, I've been there. Matter of fact, I bought a timeshare there. Okay. I, I know all the good restaurants there. Um, uh, I, 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 the waitresses know me by name. It's like cheers. But thankfully, thankfully, God has blessed me and shown me a few pathways out of that place. Out of that place of pain, out of that place of frustration, and how to re-engage in relationships. Now, I've always had a bit of a jealousy problem. I'm going to start right there, just a little bit of self-identification. I struggle with jealousy every now and then. Anybody else in the room want to just put their hand up? Just be honest? Okay. okay. You wanna, I, I'm jealous how high you put yours, so I'm going to put mine a little higher. Anybody else? Okay. That's a com competitive problem, too, right here. 
I tend to utilize social media and it destroys my heart. <laughs> So I, I scroll through Instagram and Facebook, and I am super stuck on TikTok right now. And I don't want you to get me wrong, I love my wife with every ounce of who I am. My entire fiber is, is toward this woman. And, and I struggle. I struggle because I see pictures of perfect families with perfect poses, with perfect lighting, and perfect hair, with perfect pets, with the perfect caption slash hat, hashtag, living my best life. And I'm asking myself, uh, what, 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 there is something missing here. Um, I would, if I didn't want that so bad for myself, I would, I would be puking. What's missing here? Where's the sweat? Where's, where's dad grabbing the kid that doesn't want to sit in the picture and just putting him right there? Where's the kid that's just like, hey, why is the dog not taking a poop in the middle of the picture? All of these things that are going on. And am I asking myself, how, how can they even afford to go there? I know that family. They can't afford to go there. And I just want to start here. That comparison is always a trap. When we compare, we're always going to find someone's going to lose, and it will almost always be you, because you're going to compare your everyday life to someone else's everyday highlights. Remember, everything that you see online is curated, filtered. It's made to make you want it. God's going to show us a story of a relationship that is not a highlight, but he's going to end it with a powerful, powerful message of hope. See, we all have relationships in our lives that are less than perfect, uh, less than Instagram worthy, <laughs> uh, and it could be with your spouse. It could be with your brother or your sister. It could be with your neighbor. Hey, it could even be with your pastor. Um, I, I don't know. But I know that we all could use some guidance in how to re-engage when we face broken relationships. Again, just checking in the room. Is there anybody in here that is dealing with a relationship that might be tension-filled, struggling, or you would say is broken? If, you want, if there's anybody in here that feels that, I just want to know who I'm talking with this morning. You see, this is where the story of Hosea comes in. Um, who is Hosea, you ask? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> I, I, I'm just thinking about a joke, and I'm not going to share it. <laughs> uh, Hosea is a prophet of the Most High God. Hosea is an Old Testament prophet. He's in a, in a book that's categorized as a minor prophet book. When they say it's a minor prophet, it just means it's a smaller book. It's a smaller uh, book of prophecy. It's part of the Bible, biblical narrative. And again, this is a story that invites us to re-engage in places where things seem to be broken beyond repair. Because I believe that God can take things that are broken beyond repair and take them to beautiful. So Hosea was a prophet, and his job was simple. His job was to transmit or carry God's message to the people, literally to carry uh, and communicate what God said to other folks. Now, God utilized prophets in lots of different ways. Some ways he just told the prophet to go say it. Go speak truth to power. And they would go, and they would go talk to the king, or they'd go talk to the people, or they'd go talk to the church, and they'd shout out what God would want them to say. Uh, uh, other times, God would ask them uh, not, to, not to proclaim it, but they'd ask them to predict. They'd say, hey, hey, here's what's coming if you don't change. Here's what's humming, coming. If you, if, if you stay on this course, bad things are going to happen. I want you to know, so you've got to change. You've got to change. Otherwise, something bad's going to happen. Or God will not ask them to proclaim it. God might not ask them to predict it. God might ask them to, the hardest thing of all, demonstrate it. And that's what God does with Hosea. He is going to ask Hosea to demonstrate God's love, the type of love that God has for his people, to a character that is just like us. His wife in the story of Hosea, Hosea's wife's name is Gomer. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I don't know, I don't know. Um, yeah, I always think of Gomer Pyle, but apparently Gomer was, uh, you know, a looker uh, back in the day. That was a good name. That was a great name to, to, be, to be. And um, here's where I want you to start. I want you to start at the end. The end of chapter 3, it says this. Chapter 3, verse 5. Afterwards, the Israelites shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They shall come in awe to the Lord and to his goodness in the latter days. 
the end of the story that we're going to talk about ends with the people seeing a love that is filled to the brim, not with brokenness, but with goodness. A love that is so powerful that it makes people go, whoa, that's awesome. It's a little bit scary, but it's awesome. The, the, the love that's displayed in the story of Hosea and Gomer is, is a love that invites us to re-engage. So let me tell you about Hosea and Gomer. It's a love that's beyond compare. God wanted his people to understand his love as he demonstrates it through Hosea and Gomer. And you're like, well, good, get to what he's going to demonstrate, because how is that going to help me right now? Again, my assumption is no one here knows anything about the story of Hosea and Gomer. Uh, when I was a younger man, I, I, I had this passage to preach, and I, I was told I couldn't say a certain word, and so I'm going to have you help me say it in the same way I said it in, when I was like 28 years old. Okay, so I want you to say, on this side of the room, say, who? who? Good. Okay, now, there's a thing that you use to row a boat. You do this. What is it called? Or. or. Okay, say... Oh, you're putting the pieces now. I didn't say it. You did. That's on you. Hosea's wife, Gomer, was a prostitute. Scripture says that she's a child of prostitution. She grew up in a prostitute's home. Uh, She grew into a story of prostitution. This was where she was. And God told Hosea in the opening chapters, I want you to go and marry someone, marry a lady of the evening, to put it gently. And God is going to use Hosea to demonstrate his love to to a story of an unfaithful spouse. God is going to use Hosea to demonstrate his love to a spouse that continues to run, that continues not to to focus, that continues not to be um, invested in the relationship. Anybody here ever feel like you're the only one working to make this relationship better? You're the only one trying to, to make things work out? You're the only one that really has some type of end goal? Have you ever felt like that? And I sometimes feel like that with my kids. I hope you're not watching Noah. I hope you're not watching Joey. Actually, I hope you are. Not only does he get called to marry a woman that's a prostitute, God says have, have children. And so nothing makes a relationship better with a scandalous, unfaithful partner than just bringing children into the mix, Right? Let's, let's, let's make that easier. And so they have three kids. The, the kids' names are Jezreel, Loami, and Lo Ruhamah, and that basically means land of defeat, no mercy, and not my people. Basically, he's saying, that's not even my kid. Pastor Mike, you said you were going to help me with relationship. I want to trust you. It's coming. So Hosea's story is filled with this brokenness. So Hosea's story is filled with this deep, deep level of brokenness that God is going to use to demonstrate what? His love. The end of the story, chapter 3, verse 5, is talking about God's steadfast love. Unshakable, unmovable love. The story of Hosea and Gomer was a story that was to display God's love through Hosea and how the people responded to God's love. How the people of the day were like all Gomers. And if we're really honest the way our hearts work, the way we're fickle, the way we don't really follow God the way we could or should, we're very much like Gomer in this story. I don't want to call you names other than the same name I take myself. We are all broken, we're all lost, and we're all struggling to figure out how to live this out. And so this whole story is a story of God again and again and again and again and again demonstrating his love. It's a story of God going after God the one that is lost, going after the one that is perpetually going to be lost, actually going again and paying a second time for her to bring her home. And finally, at the end of the story, that is when the true love happens, when she receives him and holds on to him, and she doesn't leave anymore. In our relationships, one of the biggest things I know that we face is that many of us give up. We reach a point where we go, I'm done, I'm out, washing my hands of it, can't handle it anymore. You pushed me too far. One of these days, pow, right to the moon, right? But it takes a long time before we get there. 
And I want to tell you that there are things that move into your relationship that I want to encourage you to invite out right now. To invite, if it's in your relationship, I want you to invite it out. Um, I want you to invite out, I want you to invite out criticism. You know, when you start saying things like, you never do this for me, or you're always like this. If, if that's a constant in your relationship, I just want to encourage you right now, just drop the word always. Just drop the word never. Because it's not true. They don't always do this, because that would be from the beginning to the end. They didn't always did that. If they always did that, you wouldn't have fallen in love. You wouldn't have this person in your life if they always did that. And they never do this for you? It really? Is that a truth? That's not a truth. That's just extending the pain further than it really needs to go. So if criticism is in your relationship. It's considered one of the four horsemen of destruction in relationship, whether it's with your kids, whether it's with your spouse, whether it's with your workplace, whatever it is, criticism is dangerous. Contempt is another dangerous thing that can be in a relationship. Contempt is one of those things where you put yourself on the moral high ground. You basically say, well, I'm better than that person, so I can tell them. I can tell them. They're, they're not as good as me. They're not as righteous as me. They're not as any of this stuff as me. Contempt has disgust in it. I can't believe you did that. We don't see criticism or contempt in the story of Hosea. We see a love, a steadfast love that continues to run toward the one it loves. These are answers driven by love. Answers that are driven by love. That they, these, because it remembers these answers driven by love never tear down. Remember the end game of the story of Hosea and Gomer. It was a display of steadfast love. With your kids, steadfast love. With your significant others, steadfast love. With your family members, steadfast love. A love that doesn't run. A love that actually runs after. What about defensiveness? That's another one of the horsemen of the apocalypse when it comes to, to relationship. I didn't mean to. I'm really sorry. You suddenly start taking on the... I'm sorry, but it was this problem. I'm sorry, but it was that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry but I was too busy. I'm sorry. I know we all live in these places. These are all places that we're all that. And an answer driven by love, steadfast love, says, I'm going to take responsibility. And it's just, I'm sorry. No but. Because the but takes everything you say after, before it away. You say, I'm sorry I'm late, but there was so much traffic. That's not I'm sorry, I'm blaming traffic. God, I, I'm sorry I ate the apple, but you put this woman in the garden with me. I, that's not saying I'm sorry, that's blaming God for putting the woman in the, in the garden. Don't put the but in there. And the last one that we see in this story of Hosea and Gomer is stonewalling. This is, if you take an animal and you say, what kind of animal is a stonewaller? It's a turtle. So in relationship, many times when we're in relationship with the people that we care about, the people that we love, and we get into a fight, we all just, some of us just turtle up. <laughs> you know, we just tuck in. We're just, we're just going to hunker down. We're just going to wait till this storm blows over. We're not going to say anything, but we're going to sit on the couch and we're going to be mad. Okay, uh, uh, you, you're going to feel how angry I am right now. You can just sense it. Urgh! Any stonewallers out there? No one's raising their hand for that one. Thank you for the one. Thank you for being honest. And it's not healthy. Our job is to answer in love. Our job is to answer in amazing, steadfast love. To, to, if, you're, if you're one of those folks that stonewalls, just simply say, I need to disengage for a second. I need a little bit of space. Can I walk for a second? Can I breathe for a second? Just give me a moment. Can we talk about this in 15 minutes? Can we talk about this in 20 minutes? Hosea and Gomer's story is one that is filled with conflict all the way through. But remember, the story is all about God demonstrating his steadfast love. The story is all about God demonstrating his what? And that's what we're called to learn how to do. And so the next four weeks as we dig into the story of Hosea, we're going to look at all different types of aspects of this relationship. We're going to talk a lot about the kids next week. Um, and we're going to dig in. I want to encourage you to come on back. But today, I want you to figure out how you are to answer your conflicts with love, with a steadfast love, the kind of love that we see 
that runs after even the most broken relationship. Because God can take what is broken and make it beautiful. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you in song and in worship and to hear your word. We thank you, Lord, that you invite us to, to, to not a human kind of love, but a divine kind of love, a love that, that doesn't know any, any limit, a, a love that can restore and repair, a love that, that can bring healing, that can take brokenness and bring it to beauty. God, I thank you for the work that your spirit is doing in people right now. I thank you that there are people that have heard your call to begin to love with a steadfast love and not a selfish love. I thank you that you've asked us to remember that there's an end game and that we want to be known for our love. Lord, we ask that you bless, bless us as we continue in our time of worship. We pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. My good friend Amber Montuli is with us this morning. Amber, could you come on down? Amber is our director of children's ministry. And she's been working with us for about the last five years. Is that right? Four and a half years. And before we bring the kids out to, to sing, I want you to get to know Amber just a little bit. Amber, tell me one thing that you love about our children's ministry, your children's ministry that you're building here. I love showing the kids God's love. Fantastic. Tell me a little bit, tell everybody a little bit about your family. How many What's the story of your family? You're married, obviously. Yes, I'm married, and I um, 10 years, October 1st, Woo. and then I have an eight-and-a-half-year-old daughter. Nice. That is, she went to the preschool, which is how I found this church, mm -hmm. and we stayed. <laughs> that, and your daughter's name is? My daughter's name is Bella. You, won't, you can't miss her? She looks very much like me, <laughs> curls and all. Curls and all. <laughs> And so this last week was a week where we did not BBS, but Camp Coaster Kids. Camp Coaster Kids. And yes. about how many kids were here? We had 40 kids. Okay, awesome. Uh, this is crazy because it's coming out of, um, you know, all the restrictions and stuff. So we're just learning how to do new things. And what was a highlight of the weekend for you? Um, just watching all the kids bond. Like yeah. on the last day, there were kids that were crying when they had to say goodbye to each other. <laughs> and this is the Holy Spirit coming out of my eyes right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to invite the kids in. I think we're going to sing some songs or sing a song. A song. So, so come on down, guys. Get in your place and get ready.
people the way that God calls us to love them. You guys ready? Let's go do this. Come on.